Hi, I'm Luke Sherville. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, we're going to break down a Chinese language ad for California Lotto. Let's roll the tape. First off, I'm not making any money from this video. Any YouTube ad money will go to the entity that owns the rights to the spot. But just to keep it clean, I'm not going to mention anybody's name on the cast or crew. So for starters, I had a general discussion with the DP. I was given some boards. The DP did a location scout, and we discussed our plan of attack for the lighting. We knew we were going to be in a working Chinese restaurant in one of their back rooms. Our space was on the ground floor of the restaurant, but the restaurant sat on the side of a hill. So there was actually a ramp that went down behind the building and entered the parking garage below the restaurant, which meant the windows of our room were really on the second floor. So uh, the most involved aspect of what we needed to do for the day was going to be how to bring light into the room from the outside and keep that light consistent. We decided to tent and light the windows with the same mechanism. Tenting is when you don't just block the windows, but you block them and then leave enough space for lighting units or CRLS reflectors or whatever you've got outside the windows to shine light in. Tenting is a way to deal with the changing natural light outside so that the light coming in stays the same throughout the duration of your shoot. In this case, we leaned a 12 by 20 ultra bounce against the building at an angle and then popped light into that bounce. The original plan was to use a light blue muslin cloth as our bounce to provide a blue tone like it was open sky, but it didn't really work the way we thought it would. It absorbed too much of the light. So we really would have needed more units out there uh, when that just wasn't gonna happen. So we nixed it. Because power was hard to come by, having two 1200 watt LEDs was ideal. We had a Nanolux Evoke 1200 and an Aperture Lightstorm 1200D. Now, given the angle of the bounce and the distance from the source to the bounce, a wide angle intensifier was what I thought I wanted. But because I'm an idiot, I believe I had attached a 45 degree intensifier to both units. However, 45 degrees is not the same on each unit. So the Evoke actually has a 60 degree intensifier available. I just wasn't thinking straight, so I didn't take it out. The 1200D had the spread I wanted with its widest intensifier, whereas the Evoke seemed too spotty. So we added the Fresnel attachment to the Evoke and it was exactly right. We did have to add a short angled offset to get enough tilt up with that Fresnel. There's always something like that, right? There's something unforeseen where you have to adjust and adapt your mind and your gear to get the result you want. And that's where it's handy to have a lot of different grip hardware to make stuff happen. Inside, the set was fairly simple. We started with an overhead lantern. Given the low ceiling, it was super handy to put the Amaran F22C into the Chimera Pancake Lantern on a Matthews boom arm. Then we added an Aperture 600X in a dome as a push from camera left and a slight warm fill on the right with a Kinoflow 850 slip. But it was really low, that Kinoflow. Like once I noticed it was at 1%. <laughs> For the background, I added a 60X into a mini softbox to bring up our older gentleman, a skosh. And then we had a 300D with a Fresnel into the deeper background, and that was silked and netted to keep the shadows to a minimum. We also had some little Aperture MC bricks in the practicals you see there to provide warm glows. 
Later on, we brought in an extra bounced Nova P300C for the green screen scene. The green screen was mostly lit with the F22C, just, you know, panned over, which was surprising to me, but it worked like a charm, which was good because we were working so fast to get everything in the can and get out. I thought the finished composite worked quite well. It's a spot, so it goes by really quickly, but it was a good day's work with rain, I might add. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Here's just a few extra notes. First off, there's another 600X in a dome coming from the three quarters back position on the right. We didn't have it on all the time, but it provided a nice edge. Once we got the master shot, we rearranged the tables to get close-ups of the different folded shapes. We cheated quite a bit to get the older couple's close-up. And that match cut was captured using a repeatable motorized slider. Worked great. So here we go, Here's the clip I posted to Insta after the shoot. It really did help us out to have such a low profile unit that we could sneak into frame. And Colin here had a fun innovation on this sucker. So this is a, a Shimera pancake, but the light inside is not what it was originally meant for. It was originally going to be, or originally this was used with 400 Joker, but instead here, We've got the F-22C from Amaran. And uh, yeah, just show us uh, what you were doing there. Yeah, so if you just pull out all the pins for the bowl in here and slip each corner into it, they fit perfectly and you can hang the mat inside there. And the mat kind of has a nice little uh, droop to it, which fills out the uh, lantern really well. Nice job. And that it lit the green screen so well was a wonderful bonus.